Hello everyone, it's Kemigator. Welcome back to another episode of Synthesis Studio. In this episode, we are taking a deep dive into one of the hardest organic chemistry questions from Harvard University. We can find the original source linked in the description, so let's jump right into it. Fumagillin is a natural product which exhibits several interesting biological activities. In 1999, Sorensen's group represented an interesting approach for synthesizing these targets. This figure indicates one part of the synthesis. The question asks you what happened to compound 1 after treatment with hydroxylamine. Moreover, you should provide a reasonable mechanism for the whole transformation. Now let's find active sites in compound 1. As you see, there are two alkenes, one acetal and an aldehyde group which can be attacked by nucleophile. Hydroxylamine is a useful reagent used in organic synthesis which can act as a nucleophile. Notice that it can attack from oxygen or nitrogen. Substituents on nitrogen and reaction conditions dictate which one attacks the target. In this case, hydroxylamine attacks from its nitrogen head to the aldehyde group. So it triggers an emination reaction in which nitrogen loses its hydrogen after attacking the aldehyde. After that, its non-bonding electrons move to the carbon-nitrogen bond and the hydroxyl group leaves the molecule as H2O. As a result, nitrogen becomes positive, so the oxygen attached to positively charged nitrogen loses its hydrogen to produce zoiderion species, which is more stable form. Now we have an imine bound and a negatively charged oxygen. Existing such active groups is very useful for building complex architectures. In the next step, acetyl chloride adds to this inner mediate. The negatively charged oxygen is a strong nucleophile, so it attacks the carbonyl group. As a result, chloride is kicked off by an addition elimination mechanism. Now the imenium ion is unstable, so the pi electrons of the carbon-nitrogen bond move to the nitrogen to neutralize it. This reaction occurs with the help of adjacent sigma electrons of the carbon-hydrogen bond. This ends up producing an enemy in intermediate. The next step is an intramolecular reaction. Before continuing, pause the video and predict what reaction might occur. As a hint, two double bonds are linked with three single bonds. This stage is set for a 3 free sigma tropic reaction. In a classic example, a sigma bond is broken and as a consequence of shifting the location of the pi bonds, a new sigma bond is created. As a rule of thumb, two double bonds should be linked with three single bonds to proceed with this rearrangement. In this classic example, all atoms are carbon, so the two compounds are the same. This reaction becomes more interesting when heteroatoms are involved, just like in our case, where three heteroatoms are present in the compound. Mechanistically, the sigma nitrogen oxygen bond is broken. The pi bond of the carbonyl group attacks the double bond, and the pi electrons of the alkenes move to the carbon nitrogen bond. To simplify things, this substituent is indicated as an R group. As you can see, after the rearrangement, the enamine moiety is converted to an imine functional group. Free free sigma tropic rearrangement is a powerful reaction in organic synthesis. If you want to know why, check out this video. Now we understand what the final product is, but an interesting question remains. Let's take a closer look at the final product. As you can see, the acetoxy group is positioned out of the plane, which means stereochemistry plays a key role here. To understand how this stereochemistry is induced, let's move into 3D space and focus on the transition state of the sigma tropic rearrangement. Pay attention to the 6 membered ring. It adopts a chair conformation, as expected. At the bottom of the ring, one carbon oxygen bound sits in the equatorial position, and the other is in the axial position. 
so the two are seats to each other. On the opposite side of the chair, you would find the planar double bound. In this folded conformation, the pi bound of the carbonyl group approaches from the upper face of the double bound. In other words, the stereochemistry is governed by torsional control. As the reaction completes, the acetoxy group ends up in the axial position. When you draw this in two dimensions, it appears out of the plane.